I have a question for you. At what stage in your life did you decide that you weren't enough? Think about that question for a moment. And I would like to tell you a few stories, three in particular, that navigated me through that journey. A story about a dream, a story about a death, and a story about a child that ultimately led me to recognizing the power of authenticity. So I would have this recurring dream. I'll call it a dream, but really what it was what was this um, full body, mind, spirit experience uh, that occurred while I was in deep sleep. My mouth was full of stuff. And this would happen at the most inopportune moments when a question had been asked that I needed to respond to, when a decision had to be made and verbalized that was life or death, when someone that I admired and looked up to like Michelle Obama and Oprah Winfrey, and yes, I dream a lot about those two fierce females, asked me a question and I had the answer, the perfect answer for them, the perfect response. But for some reason, in those moments where a response was required of me, my mouth was full. And what it felt like was that I had, I'll call it sticky chewing gum in my mouth. And I would try to pull out this chewing gum from my mouth and the more I tried to pull it out, the more it filled my mouth. I want you to picture a clown with one of those tissue boxes and she's tugging at the tissues and the more she tugs, the longer that tissue line of colored tissues becomes. That was me, but I wasn't smiling, I wasn't laughing. I was actually embarrassed and frustrated and oppressed even in my body and my mind and my spirit. Because instinctively, every single time I woke up from that dream, from that experience, I knew in my gut and in my spirit that what had been hindered from being verbalized was important. That it had life-changing power. That it had influential abilities. That it had the ability to impact. And so I had failed. Can you imagine going through this experience over and over again? Not days, not months, not years. I'm embarrassed to say how long this dream experience occurred. A long, long time. What's interesting is when it stopped. I am sitting on a plane, on a runway, Denver, Colorado, International Airport, my brother's ashes in an urn on my lap. He'd passed away rather suddenly, barely 30 years old. And I have another out-of-body experience, a conversation between my myself and the spirit of my brother. It's as if time stood still. And I'm in this interaction in my body, and I ask myself a question. So if this was you in the urn, would you be pleased with what you had achieved with your life? Would you have leveraged every opportunity you had up until that moment to do the thing that you were created to do? To give in the ways that only you could give, to add value in the ways that only you could add value? Because apparently life happens and death happens and you can't see it coming. The answer was a resounding no. And it wasn't because I didn't love the work that I was doing. I'd actually grown up in the performing arts world. Uh, my love for media and the arts was introduced to me at seven years old. I was playing Mary, mother of Jesus, rocking baby Jesus while the shepherds watched on live television at seven in my home country, Kenya. At 15, in high school, I was writing, performing in, and directing award-winning theatrical performances. By 21, I was a, a presentational speaker and anchor at a television network. It was clear to those that knew me and were around me that I was meant to be on some sort of platform, using my voice to influence mindsets and to impact lives. 
something happened though along the way at that point in my life that caused me to veer off track and head in a very different direction. Perhaps it was the decision that I made to go to graduate school and, something and study something that was totally different than perhaps what I would have decided to study had I known what I know now about the reason why I am here. Suffice it to say, I ended up working in international development and then in corporate America, doing a lot of meaningful things, but not necessarily the things that lit me up, that I was truly passionate about the reasons why I was here. And so in that moment, as I'm having this interaction, this conversation with my brother who has passed away and myself, I realize that perhaps fear had something to do with it. Fear of being misunderstood, fear of being judged, fear of not necessarily fulfilling my utmost potential that had driven some of the decisions that I had made. And in that moment, I made a decision that going forward, every single thing that I did would be motivated and driven by passion and purpose. I didn't know what that was going to look like, but I did know that I needed to make a very big change as it related to the everyday work that I did. I quit my high-flying corporate job and ventured to pursue something entrepreneurial and something that was truly anchored in my innate talents and gifts. And then I became a mom. And it's quite interesting how children will quite literally shift your view of the world and of yourself and what truly matters. My daughter was barely four years old when she went through the identity crisis. What used to be fun times, relaxed times of getting ready for school and preparing for um, social interactions with little friends at play school became, became experiences of um, tears and a struggle that just didn't make any sense to me till Zara, my daughter, says to me, Mommy, why don't you do my hair like this? And she makes this really interesting motion that didn't make any sense to me. Till we navigated discussion and ultimately I realized that my child was struggling with her self-image. She didn't like her nappy hair, her kinky curly locks. They represented not beautiful in her mind's eye. This is a four, barely four-year-old girl that was questioning her beauty and her self-worth based on how she felt she compared to her little friends that were different from her. I ultimately ended up having conversations with other women who, like me, had um, daughters about m Zara's age and discovered that many of them had had similar conversations. If it wasn't about the hair, it was about the size of her hips. If it wasn't that, it was about just different aspects of a girl's physicality that influenced how she felt about the place that she had in, in the world and how she compared to her friends and those peers and influencers in her life. I ultimately took to social media because I wanted to understand if this was an issue that was bigger than just Zara and I and our neighbors and my little network of friends. And I was blown away by what I heard from more than 400, almost 400 women situated all over the world, different backgrounds, different walks of life, different socializations. The one similarity being that they had a girl child in their life that was aged between three and 12 the stories that they shared were heart-wrenching. Things like, I can't remember the last time she ate a full meal. She's been starving herself. I worry that she does not dream big enough for herself. She's stuck on a specific perspective on wh of who she is and what is possible for her. I'm really concerned that she'll try and hurt herself again because she doesn't fit in. Can you imagine that? No mother should have to suffer the loss of a child to suicide as a result of them not fitting in. 
And so it became quite apparent to me that this was a much bigger issue. And as I spoke to the women themselves, grown women, mature, experienced, educated women about what kept them up at night when they thought about themselves, I realized some of the issues I was struggling with as an individual, they were struggling with as well. We are so hard on ourselves. We put ourselves down for all the wrong reasons. We nitpick. We, um, there's always something to change. There's something about us that is imperfect, that we dwell upon. And the issue became that we um, relate our value and our self-worth to elements that have nothing to do with what is beautiful and powerful about us. And so that is what put me on the path to do something for girls like my daughter, for women like myself and ourselves all over the world. And I chose to tackle this issue from the perspective of those initial interactions that girls deal with. Play, creating immersive, interactive, truly inclusive play experiences that are anchored in content and ideas and information that really equips girls all over the world to recognize what their value is, to recognize that they are fully equipped, innately equipped to have impact on the world. Helping girls and women realize that those qualities and those characteristics and those attributes about themselves that perhaps set them apart, make them feel other, make them feel different, that that is where the opportunity for um, unique perspective, for joy, for fulfillment, for true impact on the world, meaningful impact on the world lies. That that difference is in fact a superpower. And that being honor, honoring yourself, surrendering to the person that you really are, that's where the power begins. That's where the freedom for light and laughter and joy and peace and fulfillment, that's where it arrives, that that's where it begins. And so this is the challenge to all of us today. The vision and the mission is so much bigger than who I am. The question is, at what point in your life did you decide that you were not enough just the way you are? I challenge you to reconsider that erroneous mindset, those unrealistic ideals and standards that perhaps you strive to live toward and up to, and instead recognize that your superpower lies within it's the compassion, it's the tenacity, it's the resilience, it's the drive, it's the selflessness, it's the brilliance. Those elements are innately in you. Those are your superpower. So be bold, be brilliant, and be you. Thank you. <laughs>